So we've gotten to pretty much the end here of, of what's happening in the establishment of Israel, Judah as a, a nation and uh, the promises that God had given. So what happens here is Babylon or the Chaldean army comes in and burns and plunders Jerusalem, takes captives away to Babylon out of the southern kingdom. And this ends the reign of the kings of Israel and Judah. Uh, so what we're looking at here, as we kind of just go back and recap what we've covered up to second kings is, uh, you get a first, you get a quick history of all the earth in chapters one through 11 in Genesis. You know, you got Adam until uh, the Tower of Babel, the nations are divided, and then what we find is we get, you know, Abraham. So the first 11 chapters aren't, aren't expected of Genesis, aren't a, 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 de a detailed history. What they do is just an overall history, getting us to Abraham, who becomes really the central figure in the scriptures because then through him comes uh, the chosen nation and the chosen one, Jesus, through that line. And so uh, we got the first 11 chapters of Genesis, then God calls Abraham gives him a promise of the land. Then God saves his grandson, Jacob, and his family in Egypt, preserves them in Egypt, and they prosper, and they grow in Egypt, and they become a great uh, people. And then Israel leaves Egypt, being led out of Egypt under, under Moses, and they receive a law. And receiving that law kind of is the first establishment that you are a nation, but they just don't have their land yet. So in the law, there's promises of, of prosperity for obedience and judgment for disobedience. And they come in, they finally obtain the land after wandering in the wilderness for 40 years. They're ruled first by judges because the idea there was God wanted to be the, the king of all of Israel and he wanted to rule them and they just rule in the hearts of the individuals and the families. And then if there were bigger cases, it would go to the judges and the judges would rule. But there wasn't a king telling them what to do. The king was in heaven telling them what to do through what he'd established in their heart as law. Kind of what America was founded on, the rule of law was the idea here with limited federal government. So it was, a lot of it was taken from the time of the judges of the kings. Uh, Israel asked for a king. We want a king. We want, a king. we want to be like everybody else. It's not good. You know, they don't want to be special. They want to be like everybody else. You're special just like everybody else. Uh, anyway, uh, God gives them a king. Uh, that doesn't last real long. We have Saul, we have David, we have Solomon. Israel as a 12 nation, as a 12 tribe nation, only lasts through three kings. And then when we get to Saul's sons, it's divided. Rehoboam and Jeroboam. Rehoboam, his son, uh, takes Judah, but Jeroboam takes off and the 10, 10 northern tribes become known as Israel, the two southern ones, Judah, and the nation is divided. So the kings, the kings rule through the northern ten tribes until about 722 AD, or BC. About 722 BC is when Assyria comes in and captures Israel. And the kings rule in, in southern Judah until about 586, 587, 86. They're conquered by Babylon. So uh, the punishment for disobedience is realized. The covenant that was given to Moses was a covenant based on obedience. And we see the obedience, disobedience. And what we see here is because they disobeyed, because they went against the, the law, they do lose their land. They even lose the temple. They, they lose everything that they had there that God had promised them. The one thing that wasn't promised in Moses that was conditional really was uh, Moses, or God gave a, a promise to Abraham that he would have a land. He would have a land. And it seems like this keeps coming back. And I believe that that, you know, that says it's a it's a everlasting covenant that he made with him. And I believe we're going to see that part of that comes up again and again. I think it even affects today. Some people don't. I really do. Uh, next, we're going to move into First Chron First and Second Chronicles, which basically retells the history of First and Second Kings. It's kind of the same history time, although it extends a little bit in that it starts out with the genealogy of Adam. They go through all this genealogy, which in First and Second Chronicles seems to make it. Like we've covered the whole history of the create, you know, from the beginning of time. Uh, but what the way First and Second Chronicles differs a little bit from First and Second Kings, First and Second Chronicles focuses only on Judah and what happened in Judah. It's kind of taking uh, from Adam 
through the line of Judah because that's where the promise is coming. The promise is coming through the tribe of Judah. We see that uh, the Messiah will come through him. So uh, as we go on here, what I'm hoping to do is in our, our overview of First and Second Chronicles, will probably be a lot quicker than we've done in First and Second Kings since we're rehashing a lot of things. Although there's some really significant differences, not necessarily differences, but highlights that we find in First and Second Chronicles. And one that I really love to, to highlight is the, the time of the dedication of Solomon's Temple, which is an incredible uh, account that's given in, in Second Chronicles. And so we'll continue on from, from here, going on to the Chronicles, and then after that, We'll look at the prophets, and, and uh, well, we'll first look at some of the, the time of Esther and that kind of thing. And, but we'll look at the prophets. We'll look at the writings that, you know, they're called the Psalms or the writings and those things. And, and see how they're all placed in the history that we've just covered. We've covered this history, and now we'll go back and look at where all of these others fall into place. Uh, and that'd be something as you're reading through the scriptures that you should look for and find and see. Well, when was he prophesying? Because when we're, we're looking at an interpretation of, of prophecy, we want to first know who was it first said to and what did it mean to them? And then we look at, you know, what are the overlying principles and then an application of what does it mean to us? So the first thing you want to do, though, is see what does it mean to them? Because you can, you can open up something and just read a prophecy and, you know, it could be saying something really bad. And you think, oh, God, please don't do that. Well, maybe it wasn't written to you. Maybe it's not for you right now. Maybe it is. But you need to first find out who it was written to. And so hopefully as we go through it, we'll try and set the context a little bit, a little bit uh, clearer for when the different prophets spoke. Now, some of them spoke just to Judah. Some of them spoke basically just to Israel. Some of them spoke to both. Some of them even spoke to foreign nations. And so... We'll try and divide that up and see who the message was to and what they were saying and why.